That's drunk. Anytime I get burnt out on other games on this channel, I usually turn to old sports games. They're kind of my guilty pleasure. I still occasionally play stuff like NCAA Basketball and the original Madden from 1992. So far, I've done videos on every Super Nintendo basketball, baseball, hockey, football, boxing, golf, and soccer game, but I thought it might be useful to highlight one game from each sport that people may not know about. In other words, yes, this is an obnoxious clickbait hidden gems video, but it's hidden gems for sports games, a topic that I don't think too many people have given much thought. Which is too bad, because there's stuff out there like NBA Give and Go, made by Konami. This is an arcade port of the game Run and Gun, utilizing the same camera angle and the same style of sprite work, but with an NBA license, so you can finally realize your dream of playing as Clippers legends Lloyd Vaught and Tony Massenberg. Seriously though, this game maintains that arcade style immediacy, there's not a lot of nuance or strategy here, and while it may not be in the same league as NBA Jam, it represents a different kind of arcade basketball. Plus the announcer here is great. Even better is that this game can support up to four players, with the options of playing one-on-one, -on -one, two versus the computer, two-on-one, -on -one, or two-on-two. -two. This game is a great time, and the cartridge can be found in the wild for pretty cheap, so definitely check this one out. For baseball, my go-to is obviously Ken Griffey Jr. Presents Major League Baseball, but one game that's really grown on me over the years is Dynamic Stadium, a Super Famicom game that never left Japan. This is a great looking game featuring close-ups of close plays, which is a really nice touch, but the best part is the defense, believe it or not. When a player makes contact, there's a moment where the camera shifts and you're able to move your defense into position to catch the ball while still on the main pitcher-batter perspective. And being someone that's played a gazillion baseball games over the years, it is so nice to be able to get a jump on the ball like this and it really goes a long way in separating this game from all the other baseball games out there. Dynamic Stadium does a great job providing arcade-style baseball gameplay with player-friendly fielding, and that's really a rare combination for the time. Also, this is another game that can support up to four players, allowing the option to play one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-one, or two-on-two. For football, and I mean American football, I feel like the NFL quarterback club games have been lost in the shuffle over the years. That's a franchise that kinda got steamrolled by the Madden series, but it produced two good games on the Super Nintendo that are still worth checking out today. Okay, this is clearly just a Madden clone since it looks and plays very similarly, but the thing is, defense is a total afterthought in these games, for better or for worse. I mean, you'd have to figure, you know, since it's NFL quarterback club, not NFL middle linebacker club, that's what makes these games fun. I don't think I've finished a single game scoring or giving up less than 40 points. When people say stuff like Patrick Mahomes has Nintendo numbers this year, they're referring to games like NFL quarterback club. I think my personal best is something like 625 passing yards in one game. I should also note that both NFL quarterback club games are compatible for up to five players, so if you're looking for a good Madden alternative and aren't worried about silly things like defense, then check these games out. For hockey, there's really not much point in going away from EA's NHL series. Those games are really that good. But if you really need an alternative, there's Wayne Gretzky and the NHLPA All-Stars. This is a case where they've got real players, but they couldn't spring for real teams. So you've got these absurd logos and mascots. What is this, the Edmonton Pirates? The Pittsburgh Angry Mike Tysons? Still, this is a solid game that plays well, and again, the emphasis is on scoring. I don't think I finished a game either scoring or giving up less than 10 goals. This is another four-player compatible game as well, so if you're pining for the days of Shane Corson and Patrick Flatley, then here you go. For soccer, the obvious choices are always international super soccer and sensible soccer, and for good reason. But a game that pleasantly surprised me is head-on soccer. This one's known as fever pitch soccer in PAL regions and, uh, something else in Germany. Please don't make me try and pronounce that again. But this is a fast-paced game that's compatible for up to four players. That's a great alternative to the crappy FIFA series. There's 51 different national teams to choose from, and even if you suck at games like this, like I do, you'll find this one to be pretty forgiving and a fun playthrough. For golf, the one I keep going back to is Irem Skin's game. A lot of 16-bit golf games really tried to shoot for the stars and were way too ambitious for the time, creating lots of slow, plotting, and laggy games that did not age well. Irem Skin's game, though, keeps it simple. There's one course, 18 holes, press A when the bar hits the middle, and from there you just play the ball where it lies. It's not great, it's certainly no Neo Turf Masters, but I'll take it over most other golf games of the time. 
for boxing, I always thought Boxing Legends of the Ring was pretty good. You've got real boxers here from all different eras of boxing. The game certainly looks great, but this is the kind of game where you gotta fail over and over before you get any good at it. What hooked me here was the career mode you can play through, and you gotta love that your health meter is represented by the guy's expression, which makes this look like the boxing equivalent of Doom. I also appreciate the strategy here, you don't just mash buttons, you gotta set up punches the right way. And sure, the right way is kinda wonky, but still, I like this one, and I'd recommend it if you want a boxing game and you're burnt out on Super Punch-Out. Finally, for racing games, there's the obvious stuff like F-Zero, Top Gear, and Super Mario Kart, but there's a game that never left Japan called Battle Racers, developed by Ben Presto, featuring Ultraman, Kamen Rider, Gundam, and Fighter Roar. This is kind of like if you combined the F-Zero aesthetic with Mario Kart's combat, featuring all sorts of weapons and power-ups, complete with a power meter, where if you take too much damage, it's game over. This is an easy pick-up-and-play racing game that's well worth checking out, especially if you're looking for something similar to Mario Kart. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.